This is Anime Archaeology Station, broadcasting anime analysis to anyone who will listen. We have a basement archive full of an ever-growing collection of anime media. We tell you about it and explain the terms and tropes behind this unique medium. Thanks for joining us. And welcome to the broadcast. I hope you're having a good day, wherever you happen to be right now. And today we're in for episode three of Anne of Green Gables. A um, lot to analyze again today. As you know, Anne's one of these shows that we just seem to go real deep on. There's just tons to extract from each of these episodes. Uh, and today I particularly want to talk about the animation of Anne of Green Gables because it, well, I'll talk about it. Let's head down to the animation room and dig in a little bit. All right, let's get into it and talk about the animation of Anne of Green Gables, which is a little hard when I can't show actual clips of animation for fear of getting taken down, but I think we can talk about it still. The animation of Anne of Green Gables seems unremarkable until you realize how natural it is. It's smooth. And I don't mean that in the sense that it's always 30 frames per second. I mean it gets out of the way. I mentioned earlier in earlier episodes that Hayao Miyazaki noted the controlled realistic acting of the characters in this show. The Takahata wanted this specific sort of naturalistic approach. It's not flashy. And I think that's the point. It's getting out of the way so that you can focus on the facial expressions and the story. This is a drama. It's a kid's show, but it's also about the drama of the situation, the feelings of these characters, how they're relating to each other. Remember also that young kids have to be able to process this show. They have to be able to understand what the characters are feeling about each other, how they're feeling, why they're reacting in certain ways. So Takahata avoids animation that calls attention to itself and thus distracts you from absorbing what's going on. Because it's not flashy, because the characters are moving in a shall we say, normal way, not a stylized anime way, we can focus on them and their feelings. I also really appreciate how the anime of this era in general hasn't become codified or standardized. Brad Bird was in an interview back in the 2000s, uh, Brad Bird, director of The Incredibles and Iron Giant and others, and they asked him, what's the best and worst thing about modern animation? And he said, I'll tell you, because it's the same thing for both. It's the fact that we can go back and analyze exactly how the great animators of the past animated. We can go frame by frame and redraw and understand exactly how they did what they did. But in doing so, we've tended to create this very standardized way of doing facial expressions, where it's like a character goes from facial expression number five to facial expression number two, you know, and it's just here, here are all the ways to express these things. We almost have like a, a reference manual and we're just going from pose to pose in the reference manual. Nothing against Kung Fu Panda, by the way, but it's a good example of where the facial expressions can feel a little standardized, you know. Um, this is what surprise looks like. This is what happiness looks like. Anne avoids that. There are a lot of really interesting facial expressions in here that are not standardized. You're not going to see this as directly on character today. I love here seeing Anne looking off into the distance where there's this sense of, you know, um, wistfulness. Um, there's wistfulness in her expression. Something that's just different from what you're used to seeing. And this continues in other shots. Here you see Anne's very happy expression and just kind of the tilt of her mouth to adding just a little bit of something, a little bit interesting there, I think is just really cool. 
Um, and there's just more and more of these when Anne is entering Green Gables for the first time and she begins to understand what's going on here. The facial expression here is this curiosity but worry, this kind of fear. But again, it's not the kind of expression that you see very commonly on, on anime characters. And it just continues on, continues on when Anne is sad. Um, this beautiful shot, and it, it breaks my heart when I see it, but this shot when Anne is getting into bed and starting to cry. Um, again, just there's something about it that feels unusual. Even little things like the little dollop of red they put on her cheek that just draws your attention in to that a little bit. It's, it, it works. It's, it's effective. And it's what these characters are feeling at the time. We're not moving from stock expression to stock expression. Um, even this expression where Matthew is trying to work through his feelings while talking to Marilla, the way he's looking off to the side while talking. Again, it's, it's very accurate to this aging man who doesn't talk a lot, doesn't communicate a lot with people. Uh, just this uh, um, sidelining of his feelings, really, uh, of his emotions, just trying to, trying to get there sort of a roundabout way, it works. So I think it's really effective in this. Um, similar thing with how the characters are positioned on screen. Uh, not exactly a camera angle, but like how the storyboards decide to do that. Um, so things like this shot where Marilla and Anne are talking, the fact that we're looking um, pretty much equally at both characters, but we have Anne turning around and looking up to look at Marilla, but we're looking kind of over Marilla's shoulder. So it's not a, a, it's not a shot that focuses on either of them. It's keeping them both in the shot, but they're both reacting to each other. It adds some dynamism and it adds some visual flair to what's going on. Um, you see it in the shot where Marilla is entering to see Anne. And again, it's just how the characters are positioned. The fact that we see Marilla over the shoulder and, Moran in the, and, and Anne in the center rather, um, it just really works. Um, it's, it's, it draws your attention to Anne while keeping Marilla there um, in the shot. Um, you, know, you know she's there, you're aware she's there, but you're focused on Anne while Anne is not looking at Marilla. They're barely in the same scene together. And again, it's just, it's just different. Um, even this shot where Marilla's looking back at Anne after Marilla's going into the pantry, or the other room rather, um, you know, having a character halfway through a door stopping, looking back, holding the thing, it's an unusual but very, it's unusual for anime, but very normal for actual human beings walking around their house and dealing with people. It's not overextended, it's not flashy, but it feels real. You also see this in things like the character designs. Uh, you know, Marilla has a very simple character design in a lot of ways, but I think also especially in Matthew. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I wanted to um, uh, mention this one too. Look at this shot of Anne and the flower. So when you see, you, know, you got Anne in contrast with the flower over there, and what's amazing is how, again, Anne's not in the center of, the, of it, but even the flower is not really the center of attention. We're being pulled in multiple directions by in the one shot. We're looking at the flower, looking back at Anne, because Anne's a little smaller. It's just not the kind of composition you're used to seeing. And I think it helps to enliven the series. It adds some symbolism as you contrast a growing flower with a growing young girl. Uh, the flower with the almost prison-like bars over it, uh, implying the sort of um, how Anne is being imprisoned by her circumstances. There's a lot going on here in a very simple, normal environment. I think it's pretty brilliant. Um, and then, as I mentioned, Matthew. I don't often see character designs like this. A stooped old man. We've certainly seen the thin, you know, stooped over um, older person in anime. But this guy who is barrel-chested, broad, but has this stoop to him because he's been working on a farm all his life. There's just 
attention paid to exactly how he would behave. It doesn't feel like, again, man in his 30s with different hair. Uh, there's so many different archetypes now for character design, uh, broadly speaking, of how characters in at certain ages should look. And this is not that. Which allows us to get deeper into Matthew's head as we realize, oh, this is somebody who is unique, his own person. And what does that tell us about him? You know, the character design is not just a cipher for simple things of age and health. It's also a cipher for his life situation, that he's getting older. He does need help around the farm. Uh, and he's not going to get it from Anne directly. What does he need? So all things that I think Takahata is juggling brilliantly in this show and just makes it from an animation perspective, a bit of a standout in its own way, I think. All right, I hope you found that useful. Um, uh, oh, in case you're curious, I am back from that uh, arts and culture festival. It went really well. Everything is uh, A-OK -okay there. People seem to like my presentation. Might have made a few more fans, so if you're watching from there, thank you. Um, unfortunately, the uh, the intern, if you will, um, uh, left things in a little bit of a state. Very grateful to her for helping out here, but a few things they have to take care of, including some bugs in the system. And by that, I mean literally bugs. Uh, so that's okay though, we'll get it all worked out and taken care of. Uh, let's head in and talk about episode three of Anne. A few things to watch out for in this episode. Look at Anne's mood swings and how strongly she feels uh, about the things in her life. Look at how Marilla treats Anne in this episode. The use of symbolism in the environment around the characters to reflect their interpersonal dyna dynamics and Matthew's reaction to Anne's goodbye. That one is definitely remarkable. So uh, yeah, let's get Steve on the horn and uh, let's get into it. All right, Steve, I think we've got you on the signal. How are things up there in Baltimore? Pretty quiet. I'm glad we got on there. Um, it, we had a cloud that's just been messing things up up, up here. As you can tell, it's a little, little grim dark up here. Yeah. But we're, we're on. We're on. We're good. Okay, good. Hopefully the capacitors will handle the acid rain appropriately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see how all that handles things. Uh, we'll see how things go. Let's get into, hopefully, Anne of Green Gables will lift our spirits a little yes. bit. Interesting wow. for the... Wow. Yeah. Interesting for the show to begin not with Anne. Yes. And just this lovely shot of fishing boats and dawn yeah that's kind of cool it is cool we're back so, at the station yeah well no what i was going to say was yeah. you know first of all the when they're going panning over the boats it's not your typical oh it's the morning and you know the big sun and everything's glittering and everything it's, yeah, it's an actual actual atlantic kind of eastern seaboard kind of morning yeah. kind of um, you know, kind of gray, a little dark, but you know, it's going to get brighter. The, the, the detail on the train station, Green Gable. um, yeah, the train is remarkable to me because you're showing a trestle on the back. You don't need to do that. That's a right. level of detail that you, you don't need, you know, to, to move the story along, but it's just, it's just something that it's just like going everything's quiet everything is still so you have a a, a car a box car so, so to speak yeah. not a box car but but, but it's yeah. a it's a car and it's supposed to be moving but everything is still everything it's just a really great great detail here i think it's mm -hmm. just amazing Agreed. yeah and i guess we're going back through a bunch of these different locations now we're yeah. in that's awesome see what they're pointing out here too is that it's dawn and both Matthew and Marilla are already out doing their thing. Yeah. Life on a farm. It has been pointed out that the animation and the artwork on the pigs is, let's just say, basic. Just a little. Just a wee bit. Like, 
it's fine, but it definitely feels like these are not animators who are used to animating animals. Right. That's I mean, enough. we know they're pigs, yep. and that's good enough. Exactly. Also, just noting the specific tasks for each person. Matthew stopping the pigs. Merla's gathering the eggs, as you would expect from a farm, but just things that, you know, the, the details that you wouldn't know unless they had actually done the research. Right. Also worth noting, not surprising, but appreciated, Marilla and Matthew haven't woken up Anne. Right. They just let her sleep, let her do her thing. Uh, and again, she's a guest in the house. You wouldn't be expected to take care about all the chores. But it's that idea of, yeah, you do you for a while. Yeah. One of the things that, that <clears throat> two things I've noticed is that through mm. this entire sequence up to this point is the gradual dawn. Yeah. So as, you know, <clears throat> as we go through each scene, it gets a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. And then we get the full dawn coming through the window. And when she, in this second detail is that when she's waking up, you notice her eyes are not clear first. So she's like, her eyes are open, but she's like, you know, what's going on here? <laughs> and, and then finally she starts to focus in. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm, amazing. I love this detail where we now see things from Anne's perspective and she's seeing the ceiling and then just the play of the light on the ceiling. Such a mundane detail that we've all done, we've all seen. Right. <laughs> but it also gives you that sense again of waking up and more importantly, that sense of Anne kind of coming out of the darkness into the light of we had that, remember the, that very kind of oh, yeah. weird dark dream she had of the, the, uh, the uh, carriage ride. And we're starting to transition out of that now mentally. Ah. And she notices. Yep. Marilla folded up her clothes. Huh. This is a little detail that they brought in from the book that the window in Anne's room is stuck. It it's, doesn't move up very well. Um, <laughs> and so I just like that detail. And it's a detail that, again, grounds the show where one of those little details that, you know, yeah, houses have some windows that are a little stuck. Um, yeah. And it just, just adds that little, little level of reality to the show. And how did you like the bow on the on the, the tree outside oh, just moving up and down yeah. like that? Uh, yeah. Uh. Gorgeous. And contrast this expression to her expression last night. <laughs> yeah, no joke. Which tells us a few things. First, she is um, able to recover right from these things. She's not mm -hmm. perennially depressed. Um, uh, but also, she, she does have that love of life. Also impressive because... Like, you had to paint this, and it's the dawn light shining through the trees. So this is yeah basically just for this shot, they have this one background. It's a lot of work. Also note what they're doing here. They keep throwing little details into the middle of the landscapes. So mm -hmm. in the previous shot, I'll see if I can get to it. Yeah, you see that little house. That house, right. In the distance, and then we move forward, and we get that little... Yeah, yeah. little boat there. And yep. it just draws your eye. Now, here's something to me. <clears throat> I have not read this book. Um, I'm aware of it, but I, I, I have not read it. You've read it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I'm noticing in all three episodes is the concept of we're going to show you how beautiful Avonlea is. It's not just about how it sparks Anne's imagination, but we're going to show you everything why you want to be, why you want to be, you, the viewer, want to be here. Yeah. So in the book, do they take as much effort there as they do in this? Not directly. Because I think Avonlea is Anne's happy place or becomes Anne's happy place, right? And we see that happening here. It is becoming that for her. Okay. Um, and so, as I recall, there aren't, like, there are lovely descriptions of the place, but it's more about its meaning for Anne 
than okay. you know the the rich bucolic landscape descriptions. Gotcha. Ugh. I know. <laughs> can that be my backyard? Look, look at what I'm taking, looking at every yeah. day here. I, <laughs> can I have that in my backyard, please? Please and thank you. It should also be pointed out the symbolism here, right? A path forward. Right. The indication here. Now, for those who've read the book, you know this is the path between uh, Green Gables and Diana's house, um, oh, which okay. they'll take back and forth. <clears throat> so it's a, uh, an important uh, spot in the show. And, mm. and again, it's interesting watching an, an adaptation here where they can assume the audience is familiar with the book or a certain number of them. So this is a bit of fan service, if you will. Uh, for those who read the book, of oh, that must be the place, right? Now, this is really interesting, what they're doing here visually. And I'll move forward a little bit, if you can see in the, the images. Mm -hmm. It's kind of turning. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the, the, turning. The whole thing. Yeah. The whole thing is turning. Uh, like you're s standing underneath it, looking up, and you're, you're, you're pivoting a little bit underneath it, the way a, a, a kid would. Again, this takes effort, and this isn't like a pan cell. Like you have to rotate your image there on the underneath the camera, mm. and it's not a typical thing to do. So Takahata is clearly <clears throat> very deliberately doing this, and I, I like it for a couple of reasons. One is it just adds some visual interest, but also I think it speaks to Anne still being a little unmoored, um, mm. and still just kind of experiencing this in a a very open and questioning way. Here's the long pullback. So this is really our first full shot of Green Gables. Right. And I think this is doing a couple of things. One, it is, again, for the audience telling us, okay, here's the scale and scope of this place. Here's what we're looking at. Um, but it's also kind of like that shot in an anime, the first time you meet Best Girl, and she's, right. you know, shown in the best angle and she's centered in the, in the frame and so forth. They're kind of doing that with the house itself um, to really show you why you, you might fall in love with this the way Anne is. Also very similar to sequences in My Neighbor Totoro, mm -hmm. where you have this kind of just watching nature play and you can definitely pull that forward a little bit. No. And there's Totoro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But notice what's happening here. We're moving away from Green Gables. So presumably Anne in her head is now moving further on. She sees the woods. She's imagining what's in the woods. She's imagining the stream. She's kind of moving in her mind all around the landscape, which again tells us a lot about how imaginative she is. Um, and the fact that she's moving forward and it's not full of fairies and mm -hmm. fantasy um she's imagining and again it's it feels a little idealized but it is still reality um <clears throat> yeah very much so i mean when you look at that stream and you see that little not waterfall but little disruption yeah. there mm -hmm. that is caused by smooth rocks underneath the water mm. so whoever did this had to know that yeah <laughs> That that's that's on purpose, and that just blows my mind. Because yeah. you can just do a stream and not have to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, artistry. <laughs> Interesting symbolism here too. We get two presumably red squirrels. Mm-hmm. But then immediately after, two birds. Companionship. Right. I wonder if Hada is implying that. And now kind of wants more of that connection with other people. Don't know. If you've learned one thing, it's Takahata never does anything without a reason. No. Wow. Well. Yeah. <laughs> if you mm. didn't, you know, get the, the memo <laughs> earlier. You right. <laughs> there she goes. Just off in her own little world. Wow. But he keeps the chair. Mm hmm That's so interesting. I wonder if he isn't implying that, like, her mind is flying off. 
but you have to remember that she's her situation hasn't changed i don't know well maybe it's the the idea that here she is fantasizing about the whole thing and it's the the room is melding into the force that she's imagining but there's some part of her subconscious is like well you know you're gonna leave yeah. and so here's that stuff right there mm-hmm. waiting for you when you're done with this yeah yeah good point good point they're starting well, to appear there's, the there's also the idea psychologically that a lot of Anne's more out, outre personality traits you can tie back to her I'm going to use the word upbringing which implies <laughs> like deliberateness which isn't really a thing with her Yeah. Um, but her experiences and you can see this being that basically yes Anne goes off on these flights of fancy but it does take her a while to get there right um, she is mm-hmm. a pretty grounded person she understands everything but like let her imagination have time to wander off and she gets into these fantasy worlds. Um, so, yes. That. Mm. Marilla is not well, a romantic, I sense. No. I, you know, she, she recognizes the tree for what it is and she understands that, yes, I'm supposed to be looking at something beautiful, but I don't really care because this fruit are small and wormy and that's what I'm concerned about. It's like, <laughs> What, can, can we back up to the to the, the blooms a little bit? You know, <laughs> enjoy the moment. No. <laughs> also, I just realized something. What do they have for dessert the previous night? Cherries. Oh yeah, cherries. Cherry tree. Uh, yeah. That's where those came from. Uh, yeah. That's an interesting um, ethical statement, if you will. It blooms as if it meant it. I think that's something that Anne believes in strongly. That you should mean things, you should believe things strongly, you know. um, You should have the courage of your convictions, so to speak. Yes. I also would like to point out that it took five minutes and 35 seconds before there was actual dialogue that was not the narrator. You're right. Wow. (laughs) Boy, that was boring, wasn't it? Uh, yeah right (laughs) totally not absorbed at all I know gosh (laughs) clearly the answer is no on that face Marilla come on (sighs) okay sorry and again let's contrast her behavior with last night not only is she more cheerful and upbeat She's acting like she's at home. Yep. Very casual, relaxed. She's walking around Marilla. She's just plopping back down on the bed. Uh, remarkable elasticity in the girl. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Um, absolutely. Just um, uh, also noting the sort of mercurial emotions. Right? Just yeah. Up and, and I love how Marilla is just like, like uh huh, uh huh, and she's cleaning the window. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah, I don't care. You know, whatever. <laughs> I also suspect, and I'm sure if we went back and checked the animation, that Anne like put her hands on the glass at some point, and so you know she's rubbing off the fingerprints. <sighs> Can't have that. Okay. Watch this. We see her expression as Anne has said all this. And then her expression changes. Uh. Mm-hmm. She was caught up in that. She was paying attention to what she was saying, and she was keyed in to Anne's pain. Um, and now she's kind of shaking herself out of it. Interesting. There's, it's getting to Marilla. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is a weird thing to say, but as an anime fan, I do have to say it. I deeply appreciate that this show never shows more skin on Anne than we see right now. Right. You know, they never stoop to that level. It's like, that's fine. This is the, 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 the most you will ever get undressed in this time period, right? <laughs> uh, and so we're just, that's, we're good. Thank you. Also note here how she's holding the pitcher. 
Mm -hmm. This is, again, somebody who really knows what they're talking about and knows what the, their, their uh, familiarity with this. Because of the weight of the pitcher, it's very awkward to hold and also pour at the same time. You have to hold at this one spot to do the same without actually tipping it over. So they clearly understood, and again, for a s small girl to be able to do that, like that's the only place in which you could do that. Right. Also kind of interesting, contrasting with the night before, where Marilla leaves and gets depressed, uh, or more depressed. <laughs> um, right. Now Marilla leaves, but Anne's okay. Um, so clearly the morning has had that full effect on her. Also kind of shocking seeing her without her braids. <laughs> right. Okay. Point being <laughs> that she is still somewhat mercurial. And right. And not paying attention to the neatness of the room, leaving the bed unmade. Oops. <laughs> well, well, howling wilderness. <laughs> I do appreciate that they're pulling back the fact that she uses big words, um, yep. and also that she does so in a rather adorably over-the-top way. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, she's basically, God, will you shut up, be quiet for a moment. Oh, can you really help? Think. Yeah, and literally <clears throat> opened the door and didn't stop talking the entire time. <laughs> And notice Anne's reaction, immediate obedience. Yep. She, she's definitely been corrected on this before, and she knows how big of a deal it is. Mm. Also, another little, again, farm detail. Notice they've done their chores already. Mm-hmm. Something you, you don't realize until you've been on a farm, that, yeah, there's plenty you do before breakfast. That's interesting. Just Marilla studying Anne. Mm-hmm. So clearly Marilla is thinking things over, but we also know from her past experiences, she's not just thinking, oh, well, I'll just keep her. Right. She's making the calculation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I also wonder how much internal turmoil she's going on. We talked last episode how like she realized when Anne snapped back at her that how can you call this a, a you know, good night? The, right. She realizes, oh no, I, I, this girl's hurting. Like I, I hurt her, with with this rejection. Um, I wonder if there's a little bit of of war inside Marilla. Of, you know, I would like for this child's life to be better, but I refuse to be the one to do that. Right. You know. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not my problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's a telling statement from Marilla. Don't you know what to do with her? Hmm. And again, note that Marilla just talked back to an adult, basically. Yep. Um, something children should not do in this era. Um, but she has no problem saying, oh, I disagree. Yeah. Mm. My mind is being blown by this, some of this detail. Like... Nobody would think that the pot was so hot off of the thing. And Marilla's like using her, you know, apron as, as she would. Yep. As you would. I mean, that's kind of the purpose there. And she's doing that and doing the thing. No, a lot of people would just be like, oh, yeah, it's a Kelly, just a kid, whatever. And it's just like the deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. And the fact that, like, at the time, like, now when we have kettles, we have like bamboo handles on them or things like that right back yeah. in the time no it's it's you know two book well, three pieces of metal like that's all it is so you've got yeah. to use some kind of cloth thing or whatever yeah absolutely and also the detail of without hot and cold running water how do you wash dishes right. you know you boil water you put it in the big pot in the sink but then there's water in the big pot in the sink so it's not boiling water that you're trying to wash with right you know all those little details and to that point, for a Japanese production. Right. You know, they don't have any of this in their in their experience. Man, that's a telling expression from Marilla, too, I think. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Because didn't Matthew say she could help you in the kitchen? Yes. 
So I wonder if Marilla isn't like, well, that's what she's doing. I just, I, well, I was just going to say, do you think this might be a test yeah. from Marilla? I think it might be. Um, certainly nothing she's asked of Anne is out of the ordinary, especially given that Anne uh, volunteered to do the dishes. Right? It's like, okay, right. do that thing. Um, and then go up and make your bed. Again, reasonable. Um, although if you were a guest, you wouldn't necessarily be expected to do that. So, yeah, I, 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 but I think you're right. In general, this is a test. Like, she's watching her do the dishes. She's seeing if she'll do the bed. Yeah. Okay. Just... Yeah. A knife. <laughs> Does it have to be a serrated blade, too? Oh, God. Uh, this is a reuse of animation. This is the exact same shot as when she came down for the morning. Same mm -hmm. animation. But it is such a clever use of that because they clearly put so much time and attention into her facial expression and her body language as she's moving down the stairs. That sort of careful but fast stepping and mm -hmm. then running with the... Actually, the, the anime run, you'll notice. She's actually got her... <laughs> um, little clee down there and um <laughs> uh uh but so it's it's visually arresting enough to be to work as reused animation mm -hmm. um, yeah just good use of that this broke me the first time i watched it mm. yeah she runs out opens the door ready for a full day and she can't bring herself to enjoy it ah uh. Uh, uh, what a shot yeah it's like such a brief moment clearly in her mind darkness and the light and then it's gone mm -hmm. mm. also interesting that the inside of her mind is still nature uh, it's still woods mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't think in terms of confinement and, and civilization it's all nature mm. just oh god it's like okay hi here's the two by four feel sad mm -hmm. feel sad but i mean it's just uh, but you know it's more to her point which is you know <clears throat> this is it's it's a little bit over the top but it's yeah. it's it has to drive that that message home mm -hmm. because the shot that we just saw the th literally two second shot that we saw is a is what's going on literally in her mind so it's this isn't her like the other night it's like i'm in the throes of despair no <laughs> she's yeah right she's really sad you know this is this is this this is this is meaningful this is a this is not just her being melodramatic this is her just like i i don't want to you know this yeah. i want to i want to in her mind she's there mm -hmm. but she doesn't want to do it yeah yeah well it's also an important message for marilla Right, yeah, like you know, do you want to be torn away from this? Right, like it's right, the whole message of connection. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. <laughs> I'm sorry, Marilla's expression here is just, yeah, you know, they're definitely adding a little comedy to that of her saying, like, girl, just calm down a bit. I'm asking you, yeah, um, not that Anne's emotion isn't warranted, but uh. You said a little over the top. So this is a metaphor as well, you know. Hurting Adrenium's feelings by not giving it a name, just like you're hurting Anne by not acknowledging her as a person with needs. Right. More symbolism, the bars of the cell, if you will, mm -hmm. Anne. Locked in. All right, I don't know the answer to this. Why is Takahata doing this? Why are you spending so much time with Anne just sitting in that chair, imagining the outside, moving to the outside. I guess her imagination is taking flight, moving to the outside. Um, but he's really pushing this. Yeah. It's almost like she's collecting as much as she can in her head before she goes away. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so she's envisioning all this, whether it's real or not, doesn't really matter. It's it's what, because she, she talks about her imagination. So this is the the this is the snapshot that she wants to have in her head, so that she can remember this in the future. I think you absolutely. <clears throat> that's brilliant. Okay, so 
How many moving parts are in this shot? No kidding. <laughs> We've got the porch, the wall, and and I think the back wall as well. Yeah. Wow. Let's see if we can. Oops. Yeah, all four of them. Jeez. Wow. And to your point. For a shot of the house and just Anne in a window, like, it's just a reminder of Anne being inside, but what a complicated shot. I know, right? Can you imagine, like, the storyboard? Okay, we're just going to do the shot of Anne sitting in there. It's like, how is it? Like, okay, we're going to do this, like, three weeks later. They're like, you did, like, four moving parts in this shot. And I could just imagine turning around going, yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> We're making art here, boys. <laughs> also, I just have to call out how much emotion they can call out with maybe eight lines there on her face. Right. <clears throat> uh, it's kind of her outline, the precise angle of that one eyebrow, and mm -hmm. then her eye. Man. Yep. Amazing. There was no goodbye to Matthew. You're right. Hmm. They totally omitted that. That's something you would expect. Yeah. Even if he doesn't say anything. Mm-hmm. Right? And maybe hmm. that gets back to her idea that if she says goodbye, that makes it final. Right. And she can just let it sort of be this open-endedness in her memory. Yeah. Man. That is interesting. Mm. Mm-hmm. Just love her quick look back at Green Gables like she can't keep herself from doing it right as the music swells ah oh. yeah mm. did you now Matthew huh you're gonna you're gonna hire a boy instead of adopting one huh good to know <laughs> just to mention that on the way to go sending Anne back to the asylum just by the way Anyway, you know, just let you know. Yeah, there we go. Well, there's O. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there is that, to your point, that des desperation where it's almost like she she doesn't want to do it, but she can't keep herself from saying goodbye. Right. Boy, you can see Matthew got it hard. Yeah. Like he's practically tearing up right now. Mm. This is such an unusual... <laughs> I know. Thing to do so Matthew runs after Anne we come to the same sad song we heard last night when Anne was crying herself to sleep Matthew and Marilla were both awake staring at the ceiling and we're just holding on the back of Matthew right as he's apparently feeling the same sense of despair interesting and cutting to playing kittens. Um, yeah. And I guess it's just to kind of bring us back to, you know, actually, well, bring us back. Bring us, oh, oh, please. <laughs> yes. A little bit. Oh. Whew. Heavy. It should also be pointed out the symbolism here, right, of chasing each other, of, you know, obviously these three characters basically are all trying to chase this future of Anne being here. Just like right. these kittens are just trying to, you know, bounce around to, yeah. And, of course, the symbolism, too, of kittens, children, right? Right, yeah. Anne says that she's going to enjoy the drive. This blows Marilla away. And I think one of the messages here, too, is that Anne is showing resiliency. Right. Which is clearly something that Marilla values. Um, that... And not only bounces back from things, but also that she has a grit and determination to her um, that Marilla would potentially find um, worthwhile. Well, I mean, it's. I think she's probably saying something. I, I mean, from a practical point of view, I mean, shocking from just hearing, <laughs> I'm about to take this, crush this orphan's dreams, literally, you know, <laughs> and then this orphan's, you know what, I'm going to enjoy this. 
and you know that that's just how it's going to be and this, this is how it's going to be this is how it's going to be mm-hmm. but from a more practical point of view from Marilla it's, it's kind of like well you live on a farm farm's not easy mm-hmm. and you know it's it's you know you have good days you have bad days Marilla is not a I wouldn't say a sad person but she's not a happy person true you know she she has her order that goes through the day mm-hmm. and so maybe that's what she's seeing is that there's this yeah. possibility not 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 in and to be a you know <laughs> Hi, I enjoy nothing out of life, kind of person. But you know, just seeing a, a, a commonality there of like, well, this is the best. This is a situation, and I'm gonna have to make the best of it. And that's the way Marilla, Marilla feels. Yeah, You're, that's a great point. I hadn't even thought about that. Think about Marilla's experience, right? She's yeah. ended up taking care of this farm with her brother. This probably wasn't, you know, the what she imagined she'd be doing when she was twelve, right? Right. Yeah. Um, and so she's had to be resilient and she sees that in the end. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, it, this is one of those things where it's just like, thank God we know that there's like so many more episodes to this anime because I am just like, Oh God, just end it. <laughs> what happened? The carriage, the buggy, they both just went off the cliff. I don't know. Yeah. You know, Somehow like... Anne's already dead. Yeah. <laughs> this is all a fever dream. This is all a fever dream. No. Uh, no, you're absolutely right. I, I, you know, it's one of those things where you just go, I swear to God, if I see the candy can, candy can. <laughs> yeah, no, no tins of candy, please. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, wow, that was a ride. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. I, I, I feel tired. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, it, okay. So not having read, of course, mm-hmm. Anne of Green Gables, and this is the, the third episode that we watched. So, you know, this is the, the, the last one for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, you, how this doesn't pop up on, on more radars in terms of, schools and things of that nature yeah. even for a, for a subbed or i'm sorry a dubbed you know version of this mm-hmm. how this doesn't get more type of awards of or of acknowledgement over yeah. the years you know what i, I mean cuz there is so much to this and it's you know you laugh you cry no um <laughs> it's but but just so like as we keep saying the artistry it's art this is it. This is what it what it is. And it's nineteen was it nineteen seventy five? Seventy nine. Yeah. Seventy nine. In nineteen seventy nine you're getting all this. And yeah. it's just like and you're just like, Wow. And literally, how does how do we not have this in more of the of the public consciousness? Yeah. I guess what I'm trying to get at. Um because this this just from these first three episodes, you're just like if I was a parent watching, you know, having my kid watch this sitting with my kid, I'd probably be a gog. I would, I would just be like going, wow, that was that was really good. Yeah. Paw Patrol, this is not. <laughs> I mean, you have something that is not only remarkably faithful to the source material, and obviously adapting it for space and time and such, um, also very true to human emotion, mm-hmm. and also absurdly historically accurate yeah no joke I, how, how do you do all this at once i don't know <laughs> gosh um and just the little things of the layout of green gables right right we already know pretty well how that ground floor is laid out right because um, they're just very <coughs> consistent about it there's this and then there's a hallway in the back and all that kind of stuff uh, and just, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, what else did you notice about, about this episode? Anything else kind of stand out for you? Um, well, we get an idea of farm life, um, mm-hmm. and the inclusion of animals in this, in this, uh, particularly the cats. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but farm life in, in general, where we're shown, why the boy was so important yeah you know we're we're shown why we're given a reason why 
Because usually they go, oh, she's a plucky girl. Just adopt the girl. But we're being shown that the boy really is necessary. Yeah. That we mm-hmm. they do need the help. I mean, when you watch, I mean, you see the entirety of Green Gables. It's not just the house. It's a it's a um, you know a hen house. Working it's farm. working on farm. It's the, the pigs, the slop, the, the whole nine yards. I mean, pouring the slop. We didn't need to see the pouring of the slop, but there it was, just to give you the idea mm-hmm. of what it was. And then you know, just establishing that yes, you know, and then watching Matthew walk around with a stooped posture yeah right mm-hmm. he's older this is this is hard this is not easy for him anymore mm-hmm. so the boy is important yeah but you got Anne, yeah. and she brightens the place up she's showing some by this time episode three we see utility that she has mm-hmm. and in certain aspects may not be a she now may be able to you know shoe a horse right <laughs> <laughs> okay or or plow the, the the you know you know deal with the fields like a, like a boy would be able to, but she can do other things, and this is kind of what Marilla is looking at. And then you also have an idea of what you don't. Uh, the other thing that you don't see is that Marilla is not just some stodgy person who's just watching from room to room, straight back, back narrow back, and <laughs> you watch her. She's working the entire time. Yeah. She's moving cans of jars. She's going down into the basement. You see the cellar. You see the potatoes. You see that there is a element of risk of having these things here. These are necessary items mm-hmm. to to survive in and to, to survive with. I mean, here you have. I mean, you look at cans. You see all the canned stuff. You see barrels probably full of water or something. Mm-hmm. You have canned goods. You have. Um, I'm assuming that's garlic hanging in the background. I mean, wonderful yeah. detail, by the way. Mm. And, you know, it, it, but you see her working. Yeah. So you understand that she's just, not, she's not lazy. No. Right? She's not lazy. She, she's she got jobs, and she's doing them. And she doesn't really complain about it. She's just doing it. Mm-hmm. And so for the first time, we see what it is to be on a farm. Mm-hmm. And then we see the added element of what Anne can bring to that, not only in terms of utility, but things aren't so drab anymore. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, the tree is actually kind of nice to look at. You know, you got a brook mm-hmm. over here. I'm going to name the, the stupid geranium Bonnie <laughs> over here. You know, let's let's. Put some thought into your head of something, you know, because that's the other thing is is that Marilla doesn't really, you know, it seems absurd to, absurd to her to name a plant. Yeah. Because she sees the plant as a, this is what I use it for. Mm-hmm. So it's a geranium. So yeah. There it is. And then she names it Bonnie and then you're just like, oh, it's a thing. And now I have to consider it and I have to take care of it. I thought, here, here's and, the other... Yeah, the other note yeah, about that. Just to interview real quick. What is a geranium for? The geranium yeah. is the one um, thing in this in this entire house that's not practical. True. Yeah. So Marilla has one thing that clearly clearly there's a kink in her armor, right? Where yeah. she will have that one geranium just for the beauty of it in her house, which Anne is kind of immediately keying in on yeah and so then you're just like and so when you know that you're just like marilla she's the geranium you stupid Uh (laughs) hundred percent um yeah i i'm just i was really blown away by um the the door Mm mm-hmm go to the door and she just stands there for like seven seconds and we hold on it and the pacing of that where she runs down runs to the door opens the door right and we just freeze on it and you know you're ready for that next moment and you're when it doesn't come it's so shocking you're ready for it you're waiting you're waiting and then it it goes on long enough for you to realize oh this is what's going on and he doesn't show you her face nope so it's up to you to realize what's going on in her head 
and and what you hear is not music is you hear the outdoors like the, that volume was pumped up yep that sound was pumped up to to make that point and you know it's now what i find interesting is that in 1979 when you watch this on television you know that you're watching something important because everything's frozen and all you hear is noise yeah. so you're just like you're keyed in and you want to you want to pay attention to that in this day and age of streaming <laughs> do, it, that's lost yeah you're right for a lot of people a lot of people go oh did wait did something i <clears throat> you know mm-hmm. tap the button you know yep. it's not working no 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 no. this is what takahara is trying to do and that's kind of the art there which yeah. is we can freeze everything we can have absolutely no freaking movement and all we have to do is throw you a visual just a static or you know just a standing a standalone visual with the right noise behind it and if we do all these things you know well then you're going to be like uh by the end of it you know you're going to be devastated and what's also interesting is if you don't have the emotional maturity to connect and realize what happened there he does two things yeah. first you go back to the table and she says what she's feeling but then also you have that amazing shot. I don't know if I'll be able to actually find it visually because it's so quick. Yeah. There it is. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, and oh. by the way, everyone who's like, oh my gosh, you know, how Miyazaki is a genius. This is the boy in the heron. Right here, mm-hmm. right like this. That kind of symbolism is exactly what Miyazaki was pulling on for *Boy and the Heron*. This idea that you can have images and you have scenes in your anime that are entirely symbolic of what's going on inside a character's head, um, and just the way you have to to do all that is just—it's amazing. Mm. Also, note. I just realized this. She's wearing her shoes. Oh, she is. Which she's not doing in the kitchen. Um, meaning she's thinking forward to how she would actually be. Right. Mm. Man. Mm. <laughs> so what are we watching tonight? Emotionally damaging art? <laughs> a miserable child <laughs> yeah um, well it's one of the powers of this story I think is that it is as much as it's about the uh, external experiences of Anne it's also about her internal experiences it's about the emotional ups and downs she goes through as a, a child um and it's one of the smart things about starting this when she's 11 is that she has enough experiences behind her that you can uh, connect with her at kind of any age. Um, mm-hmm. And appreciate what she's going through. Um, she's not a very young child who has no control over her emotions. Um, but then also her uh, unique personality <laughs> yes, uh, and unique experiences also add a flavor to where She's not generic shonen protagonist, right? She's not right. standard, you know, um, uh, even young adult uh, or, or children's novel protagonist where I'm going through life and everything's wonderful, right? Or whatever. Yeah. Um, there's just, there's, there's layers to Anne that you can really understand. And then layers to Matthew and Marilla, right? Right. I just keep expecting Anne to pull out the compact and do the transformation scene. And, you know, be... <laughs> pretty Anne! Ah, I'm too you. That would be pretty cool. No, oh, that's not this type of anime. Not this type of anime. No. <clears throat> um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's been a lot. And again, if, you know, we're three episodes in. And... <laughs> Jesus and still has not been adopted yet. Right. Like, we all know the story of Anne Green Gables as her growing up in Green Gables. Like, we, right, right. Geez. I mean, that's, I mean, we all know that, that that's going to be the outcome, but we're, 
it's done so well that we're just like, okay, intellectually, I know this, but, 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 you know, you see the things going happening. Like, what if this actually did end with the carriage, with her in the carriage saying goodbye and just goes over the, the hill? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what, what if it just ends there? <laughs> I would be so angry like I was at the end of Evangelion. I, I would have been like, I would have been screaming at the team, throwing stuff and just, no! But to yeah. the point is that <clears throat> we know what's going to happen. We know that this is, this is how this is going to work out. And we're going to go on with the rest of the story, yeah. but we have to get there. And that's part of storytelling. Mm-hmm. Even when you know when the thing is going to happen, yeah. you still have to get there. And this is, you know, three episodes of getting there so, so far. And mm-hmm. we're going to episode four or, well, yeah, you yeah. would be going into episode four. And, you know, now <laughs> her tragic history of God <laughs> and, you know, but you know, we know that that's going to be the episode where Marilla is going to be like, "Oh, oh, oh, f this noise! I'm taking you <laughs> off. Come on, you know, right? You know, and because you know that has to be the end, or that has to be end, the the end of this arc. Mm. Um, but even though we know that, we're still vested in this thing. Will she? Won't she? Well, of course, we know she will. But still, we're seeing yeah. these things. We're you know, we're seeing Matthew. Matthew joined that uh, old man trying to run after a horse, uh, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He knows he can't do it, but he tries anyway. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's just like, that's like, that's when you just go, oh, God, God twisting a knife, <laughs> gut punching, <laughs> too much force in the face. What else are you going to throw at me? Mm-hmm. Well, and I also appreciate, and this goes back to Montgomery's novel, the clear delineation of these characters, right? you have to establish why would Marilla keep this girl that has no value to her given how pragmatic she is. Um, that's a big hill to climb and a lesser book would say, well, she just feels bad and decides to do it. Right. You know, we need to lay out all the evidence that's going to turn Marilla towards Anne and it's not just tragic backstory. It's, okay, you can do dishes. Okay, Actually, to your point, I was just just thinking about this. Um, if she she's tested she tested her with, with two things, uh, doing the dishes and making her bed. She does the dishes great. Goes up and she's like, "Well, you didn't do the bed right." And explains. Uh, Marilla says, "Ah, okay. Here's how to do it right." And goes, "Great." Right. Ah, okay. You can be taught. Yes. So all of these things are adding up to, you know, maybe Anne isn't the worst thing ever to happen to Matthew and <laughs> Right. <laughs> no, I, I would say not. I would not. say not the worst thing. Yes. Exactly, yes. <laughs> um, so we'll see. But, but again, you can, you can see it from their perspective of Marilla's like, here's this, you know, chatterbox, emotionally unstable kid. <laughs> you, know. you might poison my well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um who, <clears throat> yep, you know, obviously she's had a hard life, but who hasn't, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we need a boy on the farm. Um, Matthew agreed to this. This is the thing that, that needs to be done. So there's all of these different pieces where, of course, she's not going to say, well, yeah, I'll adopt an 11 year old girl. Why not? What could possibly go wrong, right? Right. Um, <laughs> You know, meanwhile, Matthew, he's just, he's working the farm. He has his things to do. Uh, this little girl comes along, and she's kind of bewitching to him. You know, he, he enjoys right. spending time with her. But also it's like, uh, and I, I love that scene early on where he's like, uh, they're, they're, they're talking, and he goes, he just can't come up with the words to explain why they should keep Anne. Right. Because like, there is no, like, logical reason. Um Except for that that great line of uh, she might do a lot of good for us, right? Right. Uh, or yeah. no, uh, um, uh, oh no, uh, we could do a lot. Of good yeah, we can do a lot of good for her. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so yeah, the, absolutely to your point, they're they're really building this to that sort of early climax of Marilla finally decided to keep Anne. Whew. Can you just imagine just being watching that in nineteen again nineteen seventy nine Japan watching it and then you get to that episode where they keep her can you just imagine parents going Oh God, thank God. I'm imagining 
<laughs> watching this with your five-year-old girl daughter. Yes. You know, and you get to this point, and she looks up at you and goes, Mommy, Daddy, are they going to keep Anne? <laughs> Yes. God, I hope so. Yes. I haven't read the book, so I. Oh, you, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Sure. It'll all work out, honey. I don't know. I hope. I'll go, I hope. Mommy, Daddy, why are you crying? No. No reason. No reason. Huh. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that's it. More of that, please. <laughs> All right. That is episode three of Anne of Green Gables. Oh, wonderful, but oh my God. <laughs> Takes you through. Two thumbs up, but oh my god. Just <laughs> two tired have thumbs up. Two tired thumbs up and make sure you have all the medication you need to deal with your emotional <laughs> damage. Exactly. Hope you found that useful. I know I did. And thank you for joining us for these analyses. As you all know, we tend to stop after the first three episodes of an anime so we can move on to other things. We have other shows and a movie, actually, in the docket for upcoming episodes, so hope you stick around for those broadcasts in the future. Lots of cool stuff to bring you, lots of stuff to analyze and enjoy as otaku. Again, thank you for joining us for the, these last 12 broadcasts of Otaku Station. It's been a privilege bringing all of this to you. I hope you find it useful. I hope it deepens your appreciation of this unique medium. And uh, so, yeah, hope you'll join us next time. And until then, watch more anime. <laughs>